Welcome to another video from the dash cam store. Today we're going to demonstrate how to hardwire Thinkware dash cam in a Toyota Prius C. This video will be helpful to some of you DIYers out there, but don't hesitate to reach out and contact us for further assistance. We have experienced professionals that successfully complete installations like this daily. Or if you're in the central Texas area and you're looking to get a dash cam professionally installed, we'd be more than happy to help you. Here at the dash cam store, we carry a wide variety of in-car video cameras. But today we're bringing the spotlight to the high-end Thinkware brand of dash cams. We currently carry the Thinkware F800 Pro, the F800, and the F100, which are all high quality and highly capable dash cams. But this video applies to all other Thinkware dash cams as well, including the F70, the F770, and even the brand new QA100. Be sure to check out our other videos where we unbox and go into detail about these dash cams. But today we'll be installing the F800 Pro, so here's the Thinkware F800 Pro and its original packaging. Let's take a quick look at everything included in the box. Of course, the most important thing in the box, the Thinkware F800 Pro, a camera mount with 3M adhesive, a way to power the camera itself. Thinkware dash cams are sold with either a car charger, which directly plugs into your vehicle's cigarette outlet, or a direct wire harness. If you haven't purchased your Thinkware system yet and plan on hardwiring it, be sure to pick the kit that comes with the direct wire harness instead of the car charger cable, three adhesive cable holders, a micro SD card with an SD card adapter, a USB micro SD card reader, and a quick start guide. Being that this is a Thinkware dash cam, the great thing is that you won't need an external voltage control module such as Blackview's Paramagic Pro, which watches over your vehicle's battery power so you don't actually end up with a drained battery. Instead of requiring a separate module to conduct this task, Thinkware dash cams have this feature built in, meaning the dash cam will automatically shut off if they notice your battery levels drop below a certain threshold. Before we head to the garage and begin installing the F800 Pro, let's review everything we'll be using in today's hardwire installation, a Thinkware F800 Pro, and today we've decided to install a rear-facing dash cam, which is a purchasable add-on making this install a two-channel setup allowing for front and rear recording. A Thinkware Direct Hardwiring Kit. This kit connects your Thinkware dash camera directly into your vehicle's fuse panel, which allows the camera's parking surveillance mode to function while the vehicle's ignition is turned off. A set of fuse taps. Fuse taps allow for non-invasive installation of a dash cam or almost any other electrical accessory into your vehicle. No cutting of wires or splicing is required. Be mindful when purchasing a set of fuse tabs to make sure they fit your vehicle's specific fuse type. Or you can purchase our fuse tab bundle, which includes all four types of fuses. Just be sure that you have all you need for this installation. A circuit tester to test our fuses to identify constant and switch fuse circuits. A fuse puller. Most cars have one of these tools in their fuse box. Or a small pair of needle nose pliers would be just fine for the job. A plastic trim tool. We'll be using the trim tool to guide and tuck your cables along and under vehicle trim, body panels, and weather stripping. A crimp tool or a pair of pliers to crimp the fuse tabs to the direct wire harness. A basic socket set to loosen a bare metal bolt or stud for a place to securely place our ground wire. Most of these items can be found on our website at thedashcamstore.com, so you can avoid the trip to multiple websites or stores to get everything you need to complete this installation. You'll be able to find the Thinkware F800 Pro the direct hardwiring kit, fuse tabs, a circuit tester, and a trim tool, and many other dash cams and dash cam accessories. Unfortunately, we don't sell basic hand tools like a socket set, but we've got you covered on everything else. Now that we have all we need to complete this installation, let's get acquainted with our technician here at the dash cam store. This is Matt. He's our lead technician and is extremely knowledgeable about anything related to dash cams and automobiles. He'll be demonstrating how to hardwire a Thinkware dash cam today. Now that we've got all that covered, let's begin the installation process. The first thing we have to do is locate a power source for the dash cam, which means locating the vehicle's fuse box. The fuse box controls the electrical flow throughout your vehicle. If you're not sure where your fuse box is located, you can always refer to your vehicle's manual to identify the location of your fuse box. We do have a full video on our YouTube page about locating your fuse box if you need help with this step. Just visit YouTube and look up the dash cam store and you'll be able to find some tips from our how-to video series. Now that we've located the vehicle's fuse box, we'll use our circuit tester to identify a constant fuse and a switch fuse because our Thinkware Direct Hardwiring Kit requires a connection to a constant power source and a switched power source. Basically, constant fuses are fuses that remain energized when the vehicle's engine is shut off, and switch fuses operate in tandem with your vehicle's ignition. 
turning on when the engine is on and turning off when the vehicle's ignition is shut off. Before we can use our circuit tester to test which fuses are constant and which aren't, we'll have to ground it before we can check our fuses. You can ground the circuit tester by connecting the end attached with a metal prong on any bare unpainted metal surface such as bolts, studs, or screws connected to the vehicle's frame. Now that we've located the vehicle's fuse box and grounded our circuit tester, we can begin probing for a constant switch fuse. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about this process, please see our full video about identifying constant and switch fuses on our YouTube channel. After we've identified the constant and switch fuse that we've been using, let's grab our Thinkware hard wiring cables. The yellow wire will need to be connected to the fuse using constant power. The red wire will need to be connected to a fuse using switch power. And finally, the black wire with the C-shaped metal prong will need to be grounded on a bare metal bolt or stud. Now, one at a time, we'll remove the fuses we have identified as constant and switched. We can use the fuse puller tool, which typically can be found inside your vehicle's fuse box or a small set of pliers to remove the fuse from the fuse box. After removing the fuse, we'll grab one of our fuse tabs and insert the fuse removed to the empty slot in the fuse tab. Then we need to connect the fuse tab securely to Thinkware's hard wiring kit using a crimp tool or a pair of pliers. You want to make sure to get a nice complete crimp here so you don't have any intermittent power issues later. Then finally, we'll plug the fuse into the fuse box, then repeat the process for the other fuse and fuse tab. Now we'll mount our front facing camera. Be sure to thoroughly clean the windshield where the adhesive will be attached and allowed to dry completely as well. This step is very important to ensure a secure and long lasting attachment of your adhesive pad to the windshield glass. Next, we'll run the power cable from the front camera down to where the fuse box is located. Now we'll plug the power cable for the Thinkware F800 Pro directly into the DC in slot. Be sure to double check which slot you're plugging the cable into because incorrectly doing so can cause major damage to your dash cam. We'll be using the trim tool for this part to safely tuck excess cables into the headliner. As we make our way to the A pillar, we'll continue tucking the wiring along the liner. Don't worry about excess cables being loose after tucking them into the headliner. We'll use our provided cable clips to secure the cables in place later. This may vary for some, but to tuck some of the wiring away, you're going to have to temporarily remove the weather stripping on the vehicle's door for easier access to the A pillar. Lightly tug on the weather stripping and it will come off, creating a convenient gap behind the A pillar, allowing us to take advantage of the space to tuck our cables behind. Be careful when tucking the cables into and around the A pillar to avoid interference with any side current airbags that may be located in the A pillar or headliner. If your vehicle is equipped with airbags like this, please consult a professional for the best way to route the cable so that it does not interfere with airbag deployment in the event of an accident. Typically, the cable can be routed behind the path of airbag deployment, but every vehicle is different, so please verify this yourself for your own specific vehicle. From here, we'll just continue running the cable down to the fuse box. Once all the cables are hidden behind the interior of your vehicle trim, we can make sure everything is properly secured in place. Now that you've drawn the wire, you can button up your install and test for proper operation. And there you have it. Congratulations, you've successfully installed a one channel system. But if you opted for a rear camera as well, let's move on to the rear cam installation. Now we're going to plug in the cable needed to power the rear camera. This cable plugs into the micro USB port. After plugging in the cable, we'll continue running the cables through the headliner all the way to the back of the vehicle by the trunk hatch. Now we'll run the cable over the top of the B pillar and then we'll thread it around the C pillar as well. Once again, to make things easy, we'll temporarily remove the weather stripping by lightly tugging on it to remove it. Then we'll have enough of a gap to continue threading the cable through the B pillar all the way to the trunk of the vehicle. Now that we're at the trunk of the vehicle, we can take a second and mount our rear camera. Make sure the surface area where you'll be mounting your camera is clean before mounting your dash cam. Then we'll feed the cable up into the trunk trim. Once you finish running the cable through the trunk into the trunk panel of the vehicle, We'll snap the trunk panel back into place and finally, we can plug the cable into the rear dash cam. Now that both cameras are connected to power and all wires are hidden, let's go ahead and power on our dash cams. Now I'm going to use the Thinkware dash cam app to adjust and personalize my camera settings. First off, to connect to the app, you have to press the Wi-Fi button on your dash cam. Then open your phone settings and open up your Wi-Fi options and connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot named Thinkware with a corresponding number assigned to it. The default password for the Thinkware's Wi-Fi is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can always change the password later, but for now, we won't make any changes to it. Now that we're connected, let's use the live view function of the application to make sure that our dash cams are properly aligned for optimal field of view. After adjusting our cameras in live view, we can now personalize and adjust our dash cam settings. 
Here I'll highlight a couple settings. In the recording settings menu, you can adjust recording sensitivity, impact sensitivity in parking mode, and motion detection sensitivity. You'll also be able to adjust the voltage cutoff of your dash cam. This allows you to decide what voltage level your dash cam will shut off. Though you can adjust the setting to your liking, the recommended voltage cutoff threshold is 12 volts. In memory card settings, you can format your dash cam's memory card. Formatting a memory card will delete all footage stored on that memory card, so be mindful when formatting. If you have a clip that you want to keep, make sure to have a copy of that file before you proceed and format your card. In system settings, you can adjust the volume of your dash cam's audio cues. Here you'll be able to turn up your dash cam's volume if you'd like more prominent audio cues. Or if you find that the audio cues from your dash cam are a bit loud, you can always lower the volume. And if you'd rather just remove the audio cues from your dash cam, you can do so by lowering the volume of your dash cam all the way to zero. Doing so will mute your dash cam. And last, in dash cam info, you can check your camera's firmware and see if it's up to date. Now let's talk about viewing your video files. In file lists, you can stream or download all your video files from parking mode incidents, motion detection incidents, manual recordings, and continuous recordings. Simply navigate to any of the categories to view the files stored in that specific file type. For example, if I want to take a look at continuous recorded footage, I'll go ahead and click on that category type. Then I'll select the clip that I want to view and then the video will begin streaming. And there you have it. Today we learned how to hardwire a Thinkware dash cam to take advantage of the advanced parking mode and to get a cleaner, wire-free install. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or get in touch with us by visiting the dashcamstore.com or any of our social media platforms. Thank you for watching, and as always, drive safe. Now recording.